Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Rebuild It. It's a very windy day today. So hold on to your hats. It's time for another Maverick video. Alright, so while I'm waiting on body panels to come in, they are all ordered. And believe it or not, only one of them was back ordered or canceled and I found it from another spot. So everything should be on its way to replace all this stuff. As I've been kind of playing around with this machine, I've noticed there's a few issues that seem to be common with most of these or several Can-Am things. I've seen them on the forum. Um, and it seems like this has several of those issues. <laughs> One of them is when you turn on the power. Okay, we've got, I mentioned before, well, it's not showing up now, but we normally have a check engine light on. And it's probably because I haven't started it since I cleared it. Once I started it, it'll come back on. But the way you check out what's causing that is to pull the code and you hold down on this ILM button right here and you flip your high and low beam headlights back and forth three times and they'll tell you the code across here, what, what's causing the code. And I don't know if I mentioned it before, but the lights on this thing, I've only got the low beams will work, not the high. When you put it on the high, nothing happens. It still just doesn't come on. So. The forums talk about these switches going bad a lot, or at least getting dirty when you mud and stuff gets up back behind there. And supposedly you can take that apart and clean the contacts and get that switch working again. And hopefully that would make my lights work and I would be able to pull the code on the check engine light. So right now when I go through that sequence to pull the code, nothing works because it's not registering that I'm pushing the high beams. So. That's the first thing I'm going to tackle. Pull that little dash off and take that switch out and see if we can get it apart and clean it. And the other thing is we've got a fuel light on there. And if you see our fuel gauge right here, it's showing nothing, like there's no fuel at all. And I know that the tank is completely full. So one of the issues was, was that the uh, float in there somehow gets saturated with fuel and just sinks and won't float and you can't buy just the float you have to buy a whole fuel pump which is like five or six hundred dollars so I have bought a float from a car that I'm going to try to retrofit to fit, to fit on that and make that work but tackle that tackle that second right now let's just work on this headlight switch all right so I pop this switch apart, which is easy. You just stick a little screwdriver under these clips on both sides and pop it apart and it separates. And here is the contact that makes a connection with this little lever in here. When you flip back and forth this, this flips back and forth when you do the toggle part. And it, you can see where the wear is on that contact in there and so I've cleaned that stripe there where it runs back and forth I'm going to see if that makes a better connection now and actually makes the uh, headlights work so put it back together and let's try it out all right so I've got it just kind of just plugged back in back here so let's give it some power and see if it does anything all right let's flip it on. Nope, still no bulb. Come on, so must be a bad switch, something else in the wiring or something. Because we don't even get a like, there should be a high beam light on there when it comes when I flip it, and we got nothing. So, yeah, I tried one more thing. I took it back apart, and there is a contact underneath that little toggle piece that went like this back and forth that I showed you. I cleaned. 
underneath that there's another piece and it was pretty dirty it looked like carbon on there so maybe that did it let's try it okay hey our bright indicator just popped on check it out both bulbs so that cleaning did it so let's uh See if we can figure out what the code is. Okay, so I'm gonna start it. We'll see if our check engine light comes back on real quick. So now maybe we'll be able to get a code. Yep. Yeah. Back off. All right, so I'm not sure why it's not letting us pull the codes. I'll have to research that some more, figure out if I'm doing something wrong. But for now, let's go ahead and jump over on the fuel tank and see if we can figure out what's going on in there. So we did get one problem solved and that's our switch is now working, so we have lights. So let's see what's going on in this tank. All right, so that fuel, pump is pretty easy to get out it's just one ring around there you tap uh, counterclockwise I think it is and pull it all out but man it is long so there's our float that black thing right there so what I want to do is turn on the juice to it and I'll manually raise that float up and we'll see if we get on our um, gauges here we'll see if it starts showing that we have fuel in there if it is then we know the float is just not floating if it doesn't then we've got some other kind of wiring problem or something like that all right so i'm going to turn on the juice and it's trying to pump i'm sure so let me lift up on the float we'll see if we start showing something registering Yep, so fuel light just went off and it's showing fuel in the tank because I'm lifting it up. So that's definitely what it is. We got the bad float. So I'll show you what I've got and we'll see if there's any way that we can connect it to this. Okay, so here is our problem child right here. It doesn't look like, I don't understand how that thing can get saturated and not float. It's like, how would they not, how would they know, not know that that thing would not ever not get fuel in it <laughs> so they can put it in the fuel tank. So anyway, we got, a, that's not very wide, probably an inch and a half or so. And I've got one that I bought. All right, so there's the one that's on there. Here's the one I've got. So definitely wider. I don't know if it'd be easier to try to use this, um, little shaft that's on here and bend it the same as that and fit it in there or probably not probably gonna be easier to try to just get the float off so let me look at it okay so i did go ahead and get this float out off of the uh, pump it's very easy it just snaps in there so i think the best thing would be to do try to bend this other one to match exactly the bends in here all right so i've got this thing bent the best as i could Let's see if you can see it here. I think it's right, right angles. So let's snap it in there and we'll see if we can get it uh, finagled back down through that hole. All right, so I've got it just kind of, I've got to put it in there in the ring, just kind of loosely on there to hold it down. So let's turn it on and see if we actually show fuel in the tank. Hey, it's floating. Look at that, full tank. So there's another problem solved. All right, so I started this up for the first time after I got everything back together and I have zero check engine light. And it could be because I connected this override switch. It's disconnected because this panel was out. And I just stuck all these panels in here just to uh, make sure I, didn't, I wasn't missing any. And I did have all of them here, so. I'll take it all back apart when I get ready to clean it up. That's awesome, I have no warning lights now. All right, so one thing I'm gonna do while I'm waiting on the uh, 
body panels to come in for the Can-Am is to go ahead and change brake pads on it. So I wanted to have nice new brakes. So go ahead and take this back tire off and I'll show you how to get them off. So now that we've got that off, first step, get these pads out is we're going to go ahead and get a T30 socket and break these loose right here. And then we'll get a 15 millimeter uh, socket and break this bolt. And there's one down here, get it loose, take this caliper off and then we can Loosen these the rest of the way up, pull out. There's a pin that goes all the way through both pads. Through here, we'll pit, pull both those pins out and we can get the pad out. And this is missing. There's supposed to be a rubber grommet right in here. See how this is loose? That's supposed to be a grommet in there to keeping that from moving when you hit the brakes and wearing that out. So I'm gonna have to get that ordered. But for now, let's get the pads out. All right, so I just got these, I got the caliper off and then I uh, pulled these pins out, which are always nasty and at least the ones I've done before are the kind of rusty. So I put them on the wire wheel and clean them up really good. And this pad just kind of rotates out and you can see it's wore way down on the side because this thing has been slipping without that little grommet in there. This side's still pretty good actually but we'll go ahead and replace them and so the next thing we'll do is we'll get our get these on the wire wheel and clean them up really good and shiny and then we'll compress this uh, piston back into the caliper so that when we put our new thicker pads on there it will shut sometimes you can get your fingers if not you can put a c-clamp or something on there and tighten it and push it back in there All right, so here's our new pads. Go ahead and put the this one in the, here. Oops, upside down. Like that. And this one goes around that, slides in, and then our pins go down through there. And on the last one I did, it was kind of a pain to get them lined up. Get it started, but let's see how this one does. Oh, that one went in pretty easy starting out. Okay, I'll just tighten all that back up and we're ready to give it a drive. So now I'm in the process of doing the same thing to this front uh, brake calipers. And these are much more worn. I mean, they're very thin, so they definitely need to be changed. It's pretty much the same process. Only these are uh, double uh, piston calipers. So twice as you know uh, effective as the rears. The pins are still in there. They're, they come in from a different direction, but they need to be cleaned up and then we'll put the new ones in and do the same thing. All right, so all the brakes are switched over to new pads. Front ones definitely needed it bad. So I went through all that to do it. So now what I'm gonna do is, uh, you can see this front brush guard or grill or whatever you wanna call it, how it's during the wreck, I guess it was hit right here and pushed the whole thing over. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that off and see if I can straighten it off the vehicle and then put it back on. It looks like all the the parts that are actually hooked to the frame are straight. It's like, I think it's just this outside area. So go ahead and get it off and then we'll see what's going on. All 
yeah, so I took that thing all apart and beat, beat, beat on it. And I think I got it pretty straight. So I'm going to leave all the bolts and nuts loose on it and put it back on here and see if we can get it to look right on the vehicle. All right, so there it is all tightened back up. I think it's straight this way. And when you're looking at it this way, I think our body panels are shifted a little bit that way because when this hit it, you know, it pushed this all over, popped this cap off over here. So when we put the new body panels on, we'll shift it and make sure that the front end of that hood is lined up in the center of this reel, which is off just a tad. So you can kind of look at the sides here and here. So it is pushed that way just a little bit. So hopefully all that just slides back. But I'm happy about that. So not much else we can do, I don't think, until the body panels come in. But we're, <laughs> we're having a lot of fun taking it out and driving around with it. That's why I'm not taking the old body panels off because I might as well play with it while I'm waiting on the new ones. All right, so we took the K&M on a little drive here and I'm about, we're about, how many miles do you say we are away from our house? <laughs> a bunch. We probably drove, I don't know, maybe seven or eight miles maybe on gravel. And so uh, I was doing it to check temperature and to make sure everything's good on the can am no errors or anything. So there's our temperature. I just heard the fans kick on. Our fuel gauge was working all up, so I went up the hill and it went down a little bit, so that's good. So I want you to try to now I've got it in uh, sport mode. So I'm gonna turn around. I want you to see if you can hear the uh, turbo squealing. guys so I'm in my parts room here in the basement and I'm finally starting to get body panels in for the Maverick and this whole box is full of them and that box is full of them so I'm gonna open them up see what all we got check them off make sure we're not missing something okay so there's all the stuff we got in which I'm still missing some things but there's front fenders front fender flares the little white pieces that go that'll go in front of the doors, pieces that go behind the doors, the big uh, I don't know what you call them, they're above the fenders on both sides of the front, like the hood goes in between them. Those two big black things. The uh, those are trim that go underneath the headlights. Those are the uh, pieces that go above the the little air filters on the front fenders there's the rear fenders and there's the hood and i'm still missing some little trim pieces so i'm going to check and see if those are still on their way but we got a bunch of it in so we can start taking that thing apart thanks guys for watching this episode of rebuild it hope you enjoyed it and thanks also to you guys from the maverick forum that just subscribed we really appreciate that and uh also appreciate all the information from the forum. That's been a, a huge help, especially when dealing with all the clutch issues. So really appreciate that. Uh, we'll see you next week. And always remember, don't retire it if you can rebuild it. Thanks so much, guys, for tuning in and watching this week's episode of Rebuild It. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any awesome content. Have a good one.